All right, welcome back to 9.2 notes. This is uh, defining angles in a circle. Okay, so here we have a circle. Uh, central angle is what we're looking for. So central angle, what we know is, is that this is formed by two radii. So, by two radii. Uh, any two radii. Here's the radii, here's the radii. This angle there formed by those two radii are considered to be a, forming a central angle. Uh, we can also choose, let's say, this radius and that radius. These two radii have formed a central angle. Notice that the central angle has an angle at the center of the circle. So what we know is that a central angle is formed by two radii. Also, that its angle or vertex is at the center of the circle. Uh, what we also know is that the angle has the same measure. as its intercepted arc. Meaning that if this angle here if angle DOA has a measure of let's say 45 degrees then arc DA also has a measure of 45 degrees. Okay, here, uh, next we have inscribed angles. Angles are, uh, inscribed angles are very similar to uh, central angles where these inscribed angles are formed by two chords as opposed to by two radii. So if we were to highlight two chords here, chord AB and chord BC, this angle here is called A, and it, an inscribed angle. There are others, uh, DE, chord DE and chord CD also form an inscribed angle. One thing that we notice, well, that we know about inscribed angles, is that the vertex is on the circle. So if you notice, let's put a little highlight here. Uh, what we have is that vertex D is on the circumference of the circle, and the vertex B is also on the circumference of the circle. Okay, so here we have this conjecture, chord central angles conjecture. Uh, this one is saying that if two chords in a circle are congruent, okay, so here's two chords, these two chords are congruent, then they determine two central angles that are congruent. That would mean that angle DOC is congruent to angle AOB. So let's go ahead and write that. Angle DOC is congruent to angle AOD if we know that the two chords are congruent. All right, so next we have the chord arcs conjecture. Here it says if two chords in a circle are congruent, just like they are marked here, if these two chords are marked congruent, then their intercepted arcs are also congruent. So here we have intercepted arcs. That will mean that arc and that arc as well. Let's go ahead and try and clarify this. Let's put some letters here. So this is, let's call this point A. Here's point B. This is point C and this is point D. So what this conjecture is telling us that if two chords, if it turns out that chord A, B 
is congruent to chord C D. That implies that arc A B is also congruent to arc C D. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what, what we just uh, talked about on the two previous slides having to do with uh, the chord central angles conjecture and the chord arcs conjecture. So this is a summary of the two previous slides. Okay, so the, one of them said if two chords in a circle are congruent, so let's pick two chords. Let's say uh, chord A, B is congruent to chord uh, D, C. What that tells us is that if these two chords are congruent, then that means that angle B, O, A is also congruent to angle D, O, C. If angle D, O, C is congruent to angle B, O, A, then that implies that arc AB is also congruent to arc DC. That's huge, right? Um, so if you have two chords that are congruent, that means their central angles are congruent, that means their intercepted arcs are also congruent. Moving on to the next conjecture, here we have perpendicular to a chord conjecture. The perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord is the, we're going to say, bisector of the chord. So it's a bisector of the chord. So let's go ahead and mark this. The perpendicular, so this one here is a they're intersecting, the radius is intersecting with that chord perpendicularly. That means that this chord has been broken up into two congruent parts. Uh, same thing goes with the other side. If this is true, where that chord uh, intersects that other chord at a perpendicular, uh, at a 90 degree angle, then it forms two congruent chords. Next one, here we have the chord distance to the center conjecture. Uh, two congruent chords in a circle are equidistant from the center of the circle, the same, they have the same distance. So we have chord A, B, and C, D. We have if a, B is congruent to C, D, then they are, or they have the same distance to the center of the circle. And what we can do is we can actually mark it here those two distances are the same from the chord to the center of the circle from the center of the circle to the chord that is the same distance if the two chords are congruent all right for the next one we have arrived to the last conjecture of section 9.2 perpendicular bisector of the chord and if you have a compass at home you can actually verify that this is true I'm going to go briefly over the construction on how uh, to figure out what we can put in this blank. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out or let's construct the perpendicular bisector of one of these chords. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. And just like always, what you want to do is make sure your compass is open up uh, for uh, past halfway when you're doing these. So you go ahead and you put your compass point on one side and then your pencil on the other. And then what you want to do is mark both, uh, put an arc above and below the line that you want to construct a perpendicular, perpendicular bisector for. And then once you've done that from one side, you go ahead and you change your compass to the other side. And you construct two arcs, one above and one below. And notice that they will 
end up intersecting. Once you have done that, uh, you want to draw a line right through those two sets of intersecting arcs. And what you notice is that this perpendicular bisector is, goes through the center of the circle. So let's go ahead and write that. The perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of the circle. 